Hi, I'm Chris Rakakis, Applied Mathematics Instructor at MIT, Director of Scientific Research at Pumas AI, and Director of Modeling and Simulation at Julia Computing. Today, what we're going to be talking about is accelerating simulation of highly stiff HVAC systems using continuous time echo state networks. This is a scientific machine learning method that is using some techniques from machine learning and modifying them for the domain of scientific computing so that way they can be stable on these types of difficult problems. So let's dive right in. So the the uh, all of this work uh, is part of the Julia Siml organization, which has accelerated many different industrial applications. Uh, one video that I would point to is John Dingleman's video um, from SIAM CSC 2021, where he showcased that changing from using Simulink to Julia's modeling toolkit.jl ended up giving about a 15,000 times acceleration in NASA's launch services applications. So there's some real speed ups that, that people are getting, even without the machine learning, um, just by changing to our suite of software. Um, we actually recently re received an award for working with Pfizer in their 2020 uh, for accelerating their preclinical um, uh, you know, processes um, by 175x by making it so that way their differential equation simulations automatically transformed onto GPU. So, you know, the, these are those things that showcase that, you know, what, we're, what we'll be testing against and what we're going to be, you know, putting our numbers against is already something that is giving you orders of magnitude speed up over something like, you know, MATLAB, Python, or even C, uh, the, the one shown on the right here with Pfizer, that is against the C uh, Sundials library. So we're, we're already starting from a very high baseline of what fast means. Um, and th this is seen not just in the numerics, but also in the symbolic applications. So for example, um, a roboticist recently showed a 2,300 uh, times speed up on his own applications uh, almost serendipitously by using the new symbolics.jl and modeling toolkit on which a lot of these tools I'm, I'm going to mention are, are built. So, so you know, both numeric and symbolic uh, per, uh, gains have been seen with, the, with these tools. Um, and so really the, the foundation to a lot of this SIML organization is fast differential equation solvers, right? So something where we generally see uh, 50 to 50, you know, 50 to 100 times faster against things like Python, SciPy Suite, uh, MATLAB's built-in ODE solvers or RSDE solve. Um, but we also see that, you know, in the in these benchmarks that, you know, some classic methods like uh, Sundials and CBODE from, from C, you know, those are not the fastest methods in the, in, in the benchmarks. The fastest methods are pure Julia methods because they've been optimized, um, you know, for different domains and using, uh, being optimized in ways that make use of some of the latest hardware. So... Um, th this is actually something that we see even on very large equations. So here, for example, we see the uh, 1,112 uh, 1, uh, stiff ODE model, which is the interaction network. And we see that, you know, the, the fastest codes on this, even when trying to make use of uh, faster blazes like MKL with sundials, um, we, we see that the fastest methods are generally the uh, ODE solvers from differential equations.jl. Um, you know, this this QNDF here. And, and so it seems to be faster than, than C codes and Fortran codes. And this even excludes a lot of the benefits that we have from uh, 2x from Symbolics and 2x from uh, sparse parallel compilation that that's not shown uh, accelerating the Julia side here. Um, so, so our baseline then is something that is extremely fast. And what, what I want to talk about is how the next generation of algorithms will give will be able to accelerate our workflows by another order of magnitude, right? So um, the 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 core here is that there there's kind of two different ways you can do this. There's using surrogates and digital twins to essentially give you a similar model, which is a lower resolution, but it gives you a very high accuracy still. Um, and the other way to, that you can do this is accelerate the actual workflow itself by automated automating the discovery of models. So today, what I'm going to be talking about is simply just the left side here of um, doing using surrogates and digital twins for for the acceleration. Though you know, check out my other talks on YouTube uh, for more on automating model discovery using universal differential equations. So the major problem with trying to do surrogates of this domain, you know, modeling and simulation. At, at scale in a way that's fully optimized is that you have to deal with stiffness, right? So stiffness in is something that you kind of know from ODE solvers as something that manifests itself when you have multi-scale behavior. So when you have a slow process that is, the, you know, this light gray that is moving over long term, and you have a fast process kind of on top of it, 
um, if you try to look at the what's going to happen using the derivative, right? If you're trying to use a local update information, then the derivative is going to extrapolate forwards in a way that is not conducive to staying on the slow manifold, right? Basically, your 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 derivative information at a point is not sufficient for knowing how to move forward because that derivative, that you know, that high positive value, will so quickly change to a negative value that trying to move forward over any reasonable delta t is going to be new, numerically unstable. So this is, you know, the, the classic reason for why stiff methods, uh, or stiff equations are problems for which explicit methods don't work, right? So ODE 4 or 5 fails on these types of problems. And it turns out that, you know, this is something that, you know, this is something that we have to know from ODE solvers, but it's also something that will affect the machine learning architectures that will work on these types of problems. And so, I mean, the, the challenge that we, that we were really looking at is how do you train a surrogate on one of these highly stiff systems, right? Because if, if you look at its behavior, you know, the, the spikes mean that it's not uniform in time. You, you cannot think about this as something that you move uniformly in time. And it's also because it is is stiff, you cannot use it, things that are akin to explicit methods. So if you actually look at what the recurrent neural network is, the recurrent neural network is if you take an, a neural network and you put it in an ODE and you apply Euler's method. So, I mean, Euler's method doesn't work on stiff ODEs. And so there's no reason to believe that a recurrent neural network will even be a sane choice on such a differential equation, right? So, you know, it, th this means that we really need to think about our neural network architectures in terms of the kinds of stability properties that they have and think about how we should be changing them to be more like a stiff ODE solver. So, so how can we do that? Well, one thing that you can think about is a, neur uh, is a physics informed neural, neur uh, neural network. So physics informed neural networks have gotten very popular in the last year. And one of the reasons why you might think that they'd be a good thing to go to is because they were implicit in time, right? So over the whole set of independent variables, you define a loss function. So that way the, the, different, the neural network itself is an implicit solution over the full differential equation. But there's a problem with this approach. Now, the, the problem was pointed out by Paris Perdicaris, where he basically showed that stiffness in the, model, in, in the model form ends up becoming stiffness in the training problem. And this stiffness in the training problem then makes it so that way the, the Euler method on, on parameter space, which we also know of as gradient descent, is unstable. Um, he was able to find that for very, very low stiffness problems, um, that you're able to sh make this kind of work by using basically an adaptive Euler kind of method. Um, but for very highly stiff equations, this is not going to scale. So what this shows is that, you know, even if you try to be implicit in, in, in time in a in neural network, you do not necessarily remove the problem of stiffness because the problem of stiffness may exist in your training process itself because local optimization is solving an ODE of the gradient flow and that gradient flow might pick up your stiffness properties. So the way that we found out to, to solve this is to transform the, way, the architecture that we're using into something that is essentially implicit in its machine learning form. There's two ways to visualize this. One way is as you know, defining a reservoir and, and building a projection. The other way is to think about it as you take a neural ODE and then you say, well, let's make the first layer be constant and let's just learn a, a last layer um, that is going to be moving from the reservoir to the observables. And if you do it in this form, then you only need to learn the last layer. And, and by, do, by doing so, you can actually change the, the, the training process into something fully implicit in time via a SVD factorization. Now you know that SVD factorizations are, you know, good for very stiff problems because they have low growth rate for high condition numbers. And so this is something that's actually used within, you know, ODE solvers when you encounter highly, highly stiff problems. Well, th then we're just using this same kind of property then as how we're generating our, our, our uh, neural network architecture, right? So, so given this, this kind of building of a semi-implicit neural ODE as something that is akin to a um, implicit ODE solver de uh, definition, um, how does this actually work out in practice? So what we did was we took one of the problems that is classic in stiff ODE literature, the, the Robertson equations, which is really well known for breaking stiff ODE solvers, right? So if you do not have a method that is A or 
usually, I mean, a lot of A-stable methods fail on this problem. Usually you need a method that's L-stable. So you need L-stability, and you generally need, um, uh, uh, you generally need adaptive time stepping to able to handle Newton divergences, right? So even if you just uh, write down a, you know, a BDF2 method with fixed time step, it will still diverge on this problem. So this is a very good classic example of something that's extremely hard to solve with a stiff OD solver. So let's kind of ask the separate question, well, can we train a surrogate on this very difficult problem, right? Um, it doesn't look difficult if you look at it in, in normal space, but if you move it over into log space, you see where all the difficulties lie, is that the transient in, in, this, in the second species is, is an autocatalyst, which in only the first second of the simulation, you know, th this little tiny piece, it autocatalyzes and it turns on the, the reaction. And so that is a highly stiff uh, uh, dynamic right there, where you have this really large derivative. Your derivative gets to about 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 11th, in, in some cases here, because these really large coefficients. So um, how, do we, how do we actually, uh, how do these different machine learning methods do on trying to learn to be a surrogate of this model? Well, if you if you look at the results, you know the the LSTM or the R, you know these RNN based architectures, they do exactly what ODE four five does on this problem. They overshoot because of a high derivative estimate at the beginning, and then they overshoot the negative derivative uh, by jumping back down. So you can see that in Figure C, where the LSTM blows up and then blows up in the other direction. The physics informed neural network is not able to train fully. Because it is not because you know it's it's gradient descent process is ill conditioned and so it's not able to truly find that that uh, that optima. Um, the echo state network the, in the traditional form is is not able to handle the the multi scale adaptive time stepping behavior on this problem. I mean, as I mentioned, this method needs adaptive time stepping to even be able to be solved by an ODE solver, and so we need an adaptive time method um, for for the for, for the uh, machine learning network to be able to resolve a lot of these transients. And so only the continuous time echo state network is able to do well on this problem. And what, what it essentially does is it transforms a stiff ODE into a non-stiff ODE. And so when we place it on a different type of problem, like this heating system, we see that as you increase the number of ODEs, this, the speed up you get uh, tends to grow because a, the, the cost of the continuous time echo state network is O of n versus the O of n cube behavior of the original stiff ODE solver. So when we place, you know, so when we have a thousand rooms here, this corresponds to about a thousand or two, two, you know, two thousand ODEs. By about that point, we're getting about a hundred times faster with the, with the um, surrogate. So th this property of being able to do well in stiff models only pays off if you have a large enough model. But if you have a large enough model, it pays off in, in, you know, dearly. So um, and we, we also put, tried this on other difficult models. So like the, I mentioned the, the, the project that we did with Pfizer, this is a problem that most ODE solvers once again failed. And so we, we asked, well, what happens if we try the continuous time echo state network here? And it turns out that you get a similar result that most machine learning methods fail on, to train on this problem, but you are able to get accurate predictions with the continuous time echo state network. Um, you know, so, so what happens if you take the continuous time echo state network to very large differential equation models? So we took it to one of these uh, 1,200 1, equation uh, bio models of, of the Wurzel gene, and we saw that we we're able to get about 100 times speed up over the MATLAB SBML toolbox um, by, by using the, the, this technique. Actually, these results uh, improved quite a bit in, before, the final, uh, before the final result. Uh, I think that the, the final result ended up being about a 20,000x speed up. Um, by using just a different ODE solver within the um, the reservoir. So this slide actually needs needs an update. Um, and, but the results on on the bio models are going to be published soon. Uh, on the on the HVAC models, though, uh, what we showed was that you can get about a total speed up over Dimola of about sixty to five hundred seventy times. So Dimola is the leading uh, compiler for the Modelica programming language. Um, the Julia implementation of the HVAC model, you know, in the, in the in the simulator itself, is about six times faster, right? Because of the improved differential equation tools that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, when you take the echo state network and you train it, you you are able to keep your error below five percent over the full time span. And when predicting at new parameters, 
And with this behavior at you know below 5% error, that's when you're able to see this 60 to 570 times speed up. So you can predict the behavior of the HVAC and the controllers at, uh, basically faster than real time by using this trained echo state, uh, continuous time echo state network. Now, the nice thing about this surrogate is that it can let you avoid having to retrain because it's actually generating a differential algebraic equation in the language of a, a causal modeling framework. And so you can take the trained echo can't continuous time echo state network and compose it with other uh, differential equation systems. So let's say you wanted to do a model of a um, of a of different buildings and couple that to an air conditioning. You can surrogatize the air conditioning one time and couple it to different uh, differential equations of of the of the building and never have to retrain the model. So you get that hundred times simulation speed up um, with with only having to do a single train. And, and so we actually show that the, this uh, this works well, but for doing global optimization of building designs about two orders of magnitude faster than if you were to directly use, you know, of an FMU that it comes from Daimola. So, so what this is actually showing is, as well is that we can take FMUs generated by Daimola and be able to accelerate them by you know, orders of magnitude and then be able to couple them back to FMU uh, simulators um, such as FMPI or things built within you know, Demola, and then uh, and then be able to use this this continuous time echo state network in this form to to accelerate the composed simulation. So it's not just a surrogate that lives on its own; it's a composable simulation architecture. And for this reason, we're able to uh, build out Julia Sim, which is giving uh, users a full um, model library which has pre-trained continuous time echo state network. So we have these large enough components, we can train the, the, the continuous time echo state network so that way um, so that way you when when you say, oh I want an HVAC model, you just can grab the HVAC model that is already trained and instantly see these 500 times ex uh, accelerations over your previous software without ever having to run training. Right. So so this this really gives you the full benefit of machine learning without that downside. And so this is what we're going to be uh, releasing as Julia Sim, which is a full uh, simulate uh, a full simulation environment and full simulation language, which has automation of surrogate acceleration, model discovery, and integration with uh, differential uh, simulators to be able to do things like op um, you know model predictive control and optimal control in a way that is surrogate accelerated. Uh, so so thank you very much, and hopefully. Um, this, this gives you a nice overview of some of the recent advancements in machine learning architectures for handling stiff systems and how they're being deployed to real applications, such as with Pfizer and Moderna, um, such as with uh, Mitsubishi Electric, and such as with Kitty Hawk for these more efficient batteries. So thank you very much.